All right, in this video, uh, we're going to talk about determinants. So determinants of 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three matrices. Um, but the idea is kind of ex you can extend it to bigger matrices, but I've never seen anyone do one by hand. Um, so let's take a look. So uh, the notation, uh, one option is you just kind of write DET and then parentheses, uh, and then you give it a matrix. So it's kind of a function on a, being operated on a matrix. Um, or uh, sometimes it looks like you toss absolute values around your matrix. Um, and then it's defined to be, so we have the matrix uh, A, B, C, D. So it's defined to be A, D minus B, C. And you pretty much have to memorize that. So uh, take like two seconds and memorize that right now. Let's do uh, two examples. So first example, we want to find the determinant of uh, the matrix 2, 3, 4, 1. So uh, it's, it's actually just that formula. You just go with it. So it's 2 times 1 minus 3 times 4, and then that's uh, 2 minus 12, so negative 10. And we can do another example. So 2 by 2 determinants are not really uh, that challenging, to be honest with you. Um, so it's going to be 5 times negative 4, and then minus uh, negative 2 times 3. So I like to put everything in parentheses so that I don't get kind of lost in a sea of negative signs. Um, so we have this. And then that gives us negative 14. That's actually all there is to calculating a 2 by 2 determinant. Um, so hopefully you're finding that easy. Let's move on and do a 3 by 3. So a 3 by 3 is uh, a little bit different. So um, same notation. I could have written determinant of and then the 3 by 3. and then, But I've chosen to just go with this notation because uh, writing out the definition is pretty long. So what I'm going to do, uh, it's, kind of, it's called expansion by minors, but I'm only going to go across the top row. Um, maybe I'll make another video where I go across other rows, I don't know, or columns, whatever. But if you always go across the top row, it always works. So let's do this. Um, so I'm going to start off with A1. Now what I do is um, I uh, kind of mentally cross out the row and column that A1 resides in. Um, and it gives me a new 2x2 two two, uh, matrix, right? And that's the matrix B2, C2, B3, C3. And I'm going to find the 2x2 two two determinant of that. So it's A1 times, um, so looking in our matrix, I'm crossing out the row and the column that A1 is in. So that leaves me with just uh, the stuff in the box there. So I want that 2x2 two two determinant. And then uh, the next thing is a minus sign. And this is what uh, most of my students forget. So it's uh, A1, and then I have this little submatrix, subdeterminant, whatever you want to call it. And that's minus, so I want to highlight that for you because that's what everyone forgets. Now it'll be B1. And then I cross out the row and column in which B1 resides, and that leaves me with another 2 by 2 determinant. So um, if you look, it's going to be uh, A2 and A3 are still there, and then C2 and C3 are still there. So let me write that down. So I'm always just crossing out the row and column um, from this coefficient that I'm pulling out. So it's A1, cross out the row and column, you get that 2 by 2, minus B1, cross out the row and column, you get that 2 by 2, and then it's going to go back to plus, and then C1 cross out the row and column, and it leaves you with this 2 by 2 right here, A2, B2, A3, B3, like that. So that's it. you got to memorize that also. So it's uh, going across the top row. It's you have plus A1, then you get minus B1, and then plus C1, so it alternates signs. Um, and then you're always crossing out the row and column, and then you just have a 2 by 2 determinant. So uh, 2 by 2s are really the key to doing all of this. Uh, so let's do an example. Okay. So I have this. All right, so the first thing I do is I pull out A1. Now I cross out the row and column for A1. It leaves me with a 2x2 two two by two determinant, uh, negative 1, 5, and then 4, negative 2. So I'm kind of color coding it so you can kind of follow along, hopefully. Um, now the minus sign, which everyone always forgets, and then 3. Uh, make sure, I, I like to put it in parentheses if there's a negative there because uh, you have minus and then a negative, but anyway, it didn't happen here, so I don't know if that's a bad example, but whatever, we're going to go with it. Cross out the row and column that three were in, and it leaves us with uh, this two by two right here, so we got two, five, negative three, and negative two, so I'm crossing out the row and column that the three were in, was in, um, and then it's going to be plus four, cross out the row and the column, and you get a two by two. And there you have it. Okay, so now we just calculate a bunch of uh, things. So it's 1, and then it's uh, negative 1 times negative 2 minus 5 times 4. So I get negative 18. And then minus 3, 
2 times negative 2 minus 5 times negative 3 gives me 11, and then plus 4. 2 times 4 minus negative 1 times negative 3. So it gives me 5. And then you can kind of work that out. And so I get negative 31. So that's the determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix. Um, I'm going to show you another way to do this. So this, the way that I just showed you is the way that I always do them 100% of the time. Um, but there is another way, so I might as well show it to you. So let's say we have this matrix, so or determinant. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy the first two rows and put them here. Okay, so now this method's a little weird, and I've never really looked into the math behind it. Um, but what I'm going to do is diagonals. So I'm going to highlight. Uh, if you're going diagonals uh, from, uh, well, the first three that you make, so... Uh, top to bottom type diagonals, those get a plus. So uh, multiply along the diagonal and put a plus. So it's plus 8 uh, diagonal here. Multiply along the diagonal and put a, a plus in front of it. So it's plus and then negative 8 because the multiplication works out that way. Then we got a diagonal here. Um, so it's going to be plus and then multiply along the diagonal. And then um, when we go in the opposite diagonals, it just gets a negative. So there's our diagonal. It's minus and then multiply along the diagonal and then a diagonal minus multiply along the diagonal and then here we go and it's minus multiply along the diagonal and then you just kinda clean it up um, and this actually gives you the value of the determinant um, and again I haven't really uh, thought about the math behind it so I'm not totally sure what's going on I don't really like uh, advocating for things like that which is why I don't use this method uh, but it does work so uh, let's do uh, another example using this method. So diagonal, that gave me 60. A diagonal, that gives me 18. A diagonal, which gives me 4. And then the next three diagonals are going to get negatives in front of them. So that, you're always multiplying along the diagonal. So it's minus 40. Uh, multiply along, so it's minus 6. And then multiply along, so it's going to be minus 18. And then if you kind of clean that up, uh, we get 18 as our final answer for that particular determinant. Um, so anyway, uh, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.